dingoes crave humans' contact because they, they're like um, the modern dogs, all the modern dogs that have to be with human beings. Hello, vibrant viewers, and welcome to Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants, for part one of our two-part series on the delightful dingoes of Fraser Island, Australia. Among the nation's most beloved icons, it is theorized these splendid animals descended from wild Southeast Asian dogs introduced to the continent some 4,000 years ago. We're on the beautiful Fraser Island of Southeast Queensland, Australia. This is the largest sand island in the world. It's over 120 kilometers long and it has over 40 freshwater lakes on it. This is the only place in the world where rainforest grows straight out of sand. This unique and beautiful environment is our home to um, the Butchelet people and their beloved dingo companion. Who listens and who sings a song? Wangari, as they are called by Indigenous Australians, are typically gold or reddish brown in colour, with long bushy tails that curl gracefully over their backs when they feel happy. Dingoes are highly social, and while young males might live alone, most prefer to live in packs with up to 10 members. Unlike domestic dogs, dingoes do not bark, but rather communicate through a complex system of wolf-like howls. domestic dogs causing purebred dingoes to drop in numbers. Fraser Island, a United Nations educational, scientific and cultural organization UNESCO World Heritage Site, has the largest population of purebreds on the east coast of Australia and dingoes have lived here for at least 1,000 years. The Batula indigenous people have resided on this island for approximately 5,000 years and consider the dingo an important part of their cultural heritage. And I believe your, your, your traditional role is a caretaker of the land and caretaker of the dingo. Oh yeah, yeah the land, the dingo was included, every other animal that lived there too was the same, you know. Mm. People was, took time to take notice of what the dingo does and what they're like, they'd understand, they understand them a lot better like we did. It, they weren't just an animal to us, they were just our like friends, you know. Mm -hmm. well, they were always with, in harmony with us. Our people used to travel, of course, from Fraser Island over to the mainland. Mm -hmm. If the dingo jumped on and came over, he came over. <laughs> he was just part of the family. dingoes are gold or reddish brown in colour, the Batula have often been helped in special ways by white dingoes, whom they believe possess supernatural powers. There is a white dingo in our stories. If there was anything that was lost, anyone or anything, they always looked for that dingo. If he came along, they knew that they'd find, find whatever it was they were looking for. Fraser Island 
resident and has two dingoes who are her constant companions. Her name's um, Pup Pup and Murrowee. Pups, mum and dad were there first, mm -hmm. then they had Pup Pup. And then when Pup Pup grew up, uh, well, he went and got Narrowy, mm -hmm. his wife now, and um, <laughs> not churched. <laughs> no, yeah, married but not churched. <laughs> and um, the father and mother disappeared, but Pup's been there and Narrowy for a long time now. She's very playful, mm -hmm. and that when if I'm walking around the place, mm -hmm. and she'll come, and she'll like um, jump around in front of me, mm -hmm. like uh, like she's dancing, and, and I, I go silly with her too, and I start dancing with her, mm -hmm. and I said, oh well, they made a movie of dancing with wolves, <laughs> well they can have me dancing with the dingoes, <laughs> I dance with the dingoes. Uh -huh. Pup Pup, um, he can be a bit shy sometimes, but he, he does the same thing too. enjoy a wide variety of food and happily consume many kinds of fruit as well as the leaves of several plants. Yeah, yeah, they um, would eat the figs, um, the fig fruit, they'd eat the mangoes, they'd, there's passion fruit around. So yes, they actually ate a lot of fruit on the island. Yeah, they'd love the coconuts. It takes them hours sucking on the, the fibrous parts of the coconut to get to them. So yeah, love them. can sometimes be quite mischievous, going right into people's houses or campsites in search of tasty morsels. Norma Harnett, who has lived on Fraser Island for over 40 years, fondly remembers one dingo who loved candy. Now I can tell you some really funny things about uh, I call them my dingoes because there was about seven of them that lived around my resort mm -hmm. and uh, if the back door, we had a little half gate that the little kids couldn't get in or yeah. get out and, and uh, if we'd left that open after the boys had brought a load of groceries or something in, uh, the dingoes would be outside just lying under the trees and we'd hear a noise in the shop and we'd say, oh there's nobody come through the front door <laughs> and we'd We'd walk around the side and he'd be just walking along, sniffing at the lollies. Sadly, the current estimated population of dingoes on Fraser Island is less than 100. Debbie Whitman, another member of the Batula people, helped put together a music album to raise awareness about their fast dwindling numbers and the need to save them. is a call for everybody to try and help us and be aware of what's happening on the island because they're the last purebred dingoes in Australia. The um, dingoes were a big part of our life and interacted with our people and um, they were just like a, a, a domestic animal really with us. When um, Aunty Ethel and that used to talk to us as kids, she used to say that um, they used to gather all the dingoes around the little kids mm -hmm. and um, they were used as warmth, body warmth for in winter. So um, they were actually like a, a major part with our family. They would help gather, mm -hmm. gather the food and everything and we always made sure that they always had a full belly as well as us. When I was young, we had dingoes in the backyard and we used to always play with them all the time. They're not like any normal dog, domestic dog. Um, they're very smart, very intelligent, and um, it, it's just great being around them.
protection efforts on Fraser Island, Robin Wells, keyboardist for the band Bachula Wangari, composed a loving tribute to these canines. Other members of Bachula Wangari include lead vocalist Kathy Tapper and her two daughters, 17-year-old guitarist Pania and 12-year-old bass guitarist Arana. The Tappers, who have their own band called the Tapper Girls as well, live in Kandanga, a small town on the eastern coast of Australia. The song is Dingoes Don't Bark. Um, Robin Wells approached a friend of ours, Debbie, and she approached us about the song. Now, Debbie is a descendant from Fraser Island and is very passionate about the song and, and the cause and the the dingoes pretty well near extinction and uh, the song's a beautiful song it's very simple um, but has a strong message it um, talks about cherishing the species and reflects on all sorts of animals and species not just the dingo but the dingo's in a sad position at the moment and we were only too happy to perform the song that's fantastic. Um, have you come across dingoes yourself and what effect did it have on you personally when you saw them? How did it feel? Oh, it's nice to see them and I think so lucky that we could just take a day trip over to Fraser Island and they were pretty much there. Uh, there were a couple on the beach, they were watching, looking. Cathy, you're from a Maori background. Do you find any similarities between yourselves and the indigenous people of Fraser Island? Definitely. Uh, Aboriginals and Maoris have, I believe, the same responsibility to the land and the animals and the birds so we have a deep respect for the land the animals and the birds and I think that's very important and a lot of indigenous people around the world would feel the same way I believe. I've heard the album it seems to have a very powerful effect on people when they hear it can you tell us the message that you intended to put into the song when you wrote when you sang it? Pretty much we have to cherish the species and the dingo in particular and that we have to understand and listen and uh, through listening you will understand that it's important that the species stay alive forever. Fraser Island is very, very important uh, and as, a, as an icon to all Queenslanders uh, and a lot of people from overseas as well. Uh, we need protection of all of the animals uh, from the dingo all the way through to uh, the, the rest of the animals that live on the island of the plant. Hello warm hearted viewers and welcome to Animal World Our Co-Inhabitants. This episode we present the conclusion of our two-part series on Australia's wonderful wild dogs, the delightful dingoes. Today we'll meet Australian wildlife photographer and artist Jennifer Parkhurst, who has spent seven years observing, photographing and painting the beautiful dingoes of Fraser Island, which is located off the coast of eastern Australia and is part of Queensland State. Due to her love, compassion and enthusiasm for these animals, Ms Parkhurst is known as the Dingo Whisperer. Dingoes don't bark or cry for them. Gari, one gari. Dingoes don't bark but they still need our help. Gari, one gari. I guess I've always been interested in wildlife. I've travelled a lot around Australia, spent a lot of years watching dingoes sort of from a distance and so on. And when I came to Fraser Island, just basically fell in love with them and that was the end of the story. It just really happened. The local indigenous people were happy that there was somebody that was looking after the dingoes for them and so they gave me the name Neba Wangari Yiran which means our sister dingo woman, which I guess sort of translated um, to dingo whisperer. Over time, dingoes have mixed with domestic dogs, causing purebred dingoes to drop in numbers. Fraser Island, a United Nations educational, scientific and cultural organisation UNESCO World Heritage Site, has the largest population of purebreds on the east coast of Australia 
and dingoes have lived here for at least 1,000 years. Another species goes up against the wall. Dingoes were once numerous and found in every state of Australia except for the island of Tasmania. But as a result of habitat loss, being purposely poisoned or shot out due to human ignorance and government culling, their numbers have severely declined. They're endangered on the mainland and they're endangered on Fraser Island. There's not a lot of dingoes and it's very difficult to count them. We think Victoria may have sort of something like a hundred and I don't really know about the other states. Fraser Island, the official numbers are, are between a hundred and two hundred dingoes, but actually we think it's probably more like fifty adults. Ms Parkhurst is Vice President of the non-profit organisation Save Fraser Island Dingoes which seeks to preserve the remaining dingoes on the island and conduct research on their complex social structure. An important international scientific study has shown that dingoes are truly unique wild dogs. Given their genetic line, their findings confirm that the Fraser Island dingoes are indeed very special. Only yesterday a report was released. Alan Wilton from the University of New South Wales has been working in conjunction with UCLA mm -hmm. and one of the other universities over there uh, with genetics experts and they've been tracing the history of the dingo through the, the genetic link and they've found that the dingo is the purest of all wild dogs in the world apart from the wolves. Yes. So th there are dingoes in other countries mm -hmm. but the Australian dingo is the purest in the world. It's official and it's going to be published. The Fraser Island dingo is the purest of all dingoes in Australia. Through years of closely observing dingoes, Jennifer Parkhurst has come to understand their deeply sensitive nature. The emotional life of dingoes is what makes them so special. Um, they're a very family oriented animal. Uh, just the way that they interact with each other, it's really clear that they do have emotions and that they do care about each other. Also dingoes are unique as far as wild animals go in that they have a long history of companionship with people. They, they like companionship with each other. It doesn't matter what the weather is, how hot it is or anything like that, they always snuggle up close together when they're having their daily nap. Um, they have a beautiful greeting ceremony. Every single time they greet each other, even if they've only been gone for half an hour, they come up and they, they go through this awesome ceremony. So if it's a big family group and you know there's six or eight members, the greeting ceremony can take a long time because every individual greets each other. If I was there uh, during the greeting ceremony, they would try and engage me in the greeting ceremony. So if I got down on my hands and knees, they would actually rub my nose. has been fortunate to discover another of the canines caring customs. I was walking along the beach one morning following this group of dingoes. It was pre-dawn, it was very dark. I was having trouble keeping track of them and was sort of weaving in and out of the beach and the bush and so forth. Yeah, at one stage I lost them and I, I really couldn't find them. So I just sort of stopped and paused and heard a howl begin and realised it was a chorus house. So I was able to locate the family and, and actually witness this chorus howl, which is such a beautiful thing. I wondered why they were howling and then I looked across and realised the sun was just peeking above the horizon and I thought, I bet the dingoes howl every morning at the sun. Uh, wolves are known for howling at the moon mm. and I think that dingoes howl at the sun and I think that what they're doing is they're counting their numbers because they can hear each individual voice. So they're counting just to make sure everybody's still there. The following story is yet another example of how the dingoes of Fraser Island love 
and trust Jennifer Parkhurst. I met Kara about five years ago when she was a puppy and uh, I was just on the beach picking up marine debris. She'd been playing in the water and she just came running up to me and exhibited all that play behaviour kind of stuff and we had a bit of a play and then she kind of just sat down beside me and the friendship started from there. It was completely her choice and that's so special just to have a wild animal choose to come and be your friend. We admire canine dogs because they are so loyal but to have a wild animal loyal to you is, is just incredible. They don't have to be, they owe us nothing. They just give it freely of their own choice. The beautiful, gentle Kira is a loyal friend and shows great concern for Miss Parkhurst's well-being. Every moment spent with the Jingos has taught me something and given me something. It's all been so precious. I believe that, um, that Kira would risk her life for me without thinking twice about it and at one stage there was a man that was harassing me and he was stalking me through the bush and I became fairly frightened. Um, he raised his voice and so forth and Kira just came tearing out of the bush and placed herself right between the pair of us and bristled and whatever and scared the daylights out of him and she stayed with me until she knew that I was safe again which is just extraordinary. Kira's family members have also looked out for Jennifer Parker's safety. There was one occasion and I was lost. Um, I'm diabetic and I had just enough supplies to get myself through for another couple of hours but I did start to panic because I was deep in the bush and I had absolutely no idea where I was going and I just screamed out for Kira. I didn't know if she was anywhere near there um, and Kira didn't actually come along but another member of the family group did. Just came along and found me and led me out of the bush. Between the ages of one and two years female dingoes carefully select mates remaining with their partners for the rest of their lives. And when a female becomes pregnant, she finds a sheltered area such as an abandoned burrow, hollow log, or space under a boulder, and gives birth to her litter. She then feeds her precious babies with her milk until they can eat solid food. But she is not alone in her task, as her entire pack helps in raising the babies. When they're raising pups, the entire pack gets involved and the effort that they go to to ensure the survival of those pups is just incredible to watch. It's something that I can hardly even describe and kind of goes to show why uh, sort of family is important, why the family has to remain intact, why we can't just go and destroy um, members of, of the family. Last year's pups become allo parental helpers. All members of the pack provision the pups, so they go out and they eat the food and they bring it back and regurgitate it. And dingo provision their pups in that way. So it's very special. The fathers have a particular role in the family. They chastise the pup and teach them the rules and the social sort of skills that they need. And, and look, the, the parents do self-sacrifice. I've watched mothers nursing for three months which is way beyond what you know a canine would nurse mm -hmm. a pup and they're doing it at the detriment of their own welfare. The other members of the pack also provision the mother while she's nursing so you've got lots of adults that come in and actually feed the mother so she's got enough strength in her body to provide the milk for the pups. Jennifer Parkhurst for dedicating your life to protecting the magnificent dingoes of Fraser Island and helping many to understand their deeply loving nature. 
We pray that generations to come will also enjoy the company of these charming and sweet animals. For more details on Jennifer Parkhurst, please visit www.fraserislandfootprints.com. To learn more about Save Fraser Island Dingoes and for a copy of Bachula Wangari's CD, Dingoes Don't Bark, please visit www.savefraserislanddingoes.com. Thank you, kind viewers, for joining us today on Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants. Enlightening Entertainment is up next after noteworthy news. May we all cherish and care for our amazing animal friends wherever they may be. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash aw.